well, that's not good. My old Century 3 autopilot is dead. I could have it repaired. In fact, I did that once in 2012, right after I bought the Bonanza. And it had worked well for many years since then. But today, a decade later, there's a new generation of digital autopilots available for retrofit, which did not exist at that time. And while the Century 3 was a tremendous help on long flights while it worked, it was also relatively basic in functionality. My setup never had GPS steering, nor did it have vertical modes to maintain an airspeed or a vertical speed, let alone altitude preselect. It's time to look for a new digital autopilot. Now, I have flown in the past with other autopilots besides my Century 3. Several planes with the old Bendix King models, for example, which were popular in the 1980s and 1990s. And also the more modern DFC-90 from Aberdyne in this Cirrus behind me, in the flying club in which I teach here in Cedar Rapids. That's a capable modern autopilot, well integrated with the other avionics in the airplane. And yes, it has spoiled me a bit over the last couple of years and created some expectations for what I would want in my Bonanza if one day I would put a new autopilot in my own plane. Well, that day is here. So let's start with this. What exactly do I want in an autopilot? Let me walk you through my selection criteria. And understand this is my personal list for the kind of trips I fly and the weather I fly in. So your wish list may be quite different, and that's okay. But for me, here are the things I consider important. It needs to be available and approved for my Bonanza. I guess this one goes without saying, but it does actually rule out a few contenders. I need at least a two-axis system for lateral and for pitch control. And it needs to have auto trim. Otherwise, when the autopilot disconnects, it can hand an airplane to me that pitches up or down. And the constant manual trimming as directed by an autopilot without electric pitch trim gets annoying pretty quickly. It needs to fly an instrument approach to minimums, 200 feet above the ground, and I mean both ILS and GPS-based approaches. I fly an IMC somewhat regularly, usually single pilot, and I really want the autopilot to be available as a reliable helper at the end of a long flight. It must be attitude-based, and they pretty much all are these days, for best performance. And it must have native support for GPS steering. Yes, I know there are ways to use the heading mode of an old autopilot to fake GPS steering, but you can't arm those to do something like fly a heading to intercept a course. I want a modern autopilot which was designed with GPS in mind. And GPS steering is what allows an autopilot to fly all the complex procedure elements like holds, procedure turns and the like with better precision than any human can. So let's take a look at the choices I have. One, the Avidyne DFC-90. As I mentioned, I know this autopilot well, and I like it in the Cirrus. Two, Garmin makes two retrofit autopilots, the GFC-500 and the somewhat beefier and more independent GFC-600. Both of these have a good reputation in the field. Three, the Aztec 3100 from Genesis Aerosystems. It can replace older Aztec autopilots, but it can also be a clean sheet install with new servos. Four, Dynon just very recently certified its autopilot for the A36 Bonanza as an add-on for their Skyview system. Five, Bendix King offers a couple of different retrofit autopilots, the Aerocruise 230 and the more basic Aerocruise 100. The 100 was formerly known as TrueTrack. And finally, six, there is the Trio Pro Pilot. Let's see how these stack up against my selection criteria. Avidyne's DFC-90 checks all the boxes, but unfortunately, Avidyne does not sell servos for their autopilot to actuate the control surfaces. The only way to install a DFC-90 is to replace an existing Aztec autopilot. And since I start with a Sentry, not an Aztec, the only way for me to get a DFC-90 would be to install a new Aztec autopilot first, only to take it right out and replace it with a DFC-90. That just doesn't make sense for my situation. Garmin's GFC 500 and GFC 600 also check all the boxes, and they do come with servos. And I really like their control panels. 
with different styles of knobs for tactile feedback to confirm which one you're touching and logical grouping of controls between lateral, vertical and mode controls. Next is the STEC 3100. Similar in price, style and capability to the GFC 600. It too checks all the boxes on my list. Dynon took a long time to get their autopilot certified for the A36 Bonanza, but fortunately for me, they did get approval in time for my search, giving me yet another option. For other Bonanza models, the Dynon has an AFM limitation to not use the autopilot below 425 feet above ground. But for the A36, that was improved to 200 feet above ground. Good enough for my requirement to fly coupled approaches to minimums. Bendix King is a somewhat strange case. They acquired the TrueTrack Autopilot and rebranded it as the AeroCruise 100, which is available for a few Cessna and Piper aircraft, but not a Bonanza. Even if I could install it, the AFM supplement includes a limitation which prohibits use of the Autopilot below 700 feet above ground. Other limitations prohibit the use of the Autopilot in some situations where one might actually want it the most, such as on instrument approaches or during a GPS outage. I couldn't find the AFM supplement for the higher-end AeroCruise 230 on the web, but the 230 is available only as a drop-in replacement for the old KFC 150 and KFC 200 systems. So it wouldn't work for my Bonanza anyway. For the sake of completeness, I should mention the KFC 225, but it's an old design which does not provide the same level of integration with today's modern avionics. And looking at the starting price I saw on their website, I can't help but wonder, do they really want to sell this one? And then finally, the Trio. It's a simple design, it's rate-based, meaning it won't provide the accuracy and stability of the attitude-based autopilot designs. I didn't see a pitch trim option. It's not approved for my Bonanza anyway. Maybe a good fit for some owners, but it doesn't do many of the things I'm looking for. So I've narrowed it down to Garmin, Aztec, or Dynon. Let's look at them more closely. The Dynon Autopilot is part of the Dynon Skyview system, which includes their PFD, sensors, and also their backup instruments. And the Dynon PFD is not a bad PFD from what I've seen. Though I must say the only approved backup instrument, the D10A, looks rather old and a bit clunky. That wouldn't be a deal breaker, but then there are two things which I really do not like about the Dynon Autopilot. One, if you look at the small print for the pitch trim, you will see that the pitch trim only works if you happen to have an Edo Air pitch trim servo installed. That's the one from a Century Autopilot. And while I happen to have one of those in my Bonanza, it's a 40-year-old servo. Why would I want to keep that? The second thing is the Autopilot mode control panel. It's a simple cluster of buttons with no logical grouping I can recognize and no tactile feedback on what I might be pushing. Clearly this was optimized for cost, not for human factors concerns. And the Dynon system overall is relatively affordable. It's a good thing. Cost is a factor for me, but it's not my only concern. I really want something I'll be happy with for many years. So compare this panel with the one from the Garmin GFC 500, which is a piece of beauty and much more resembles the flight control panels you find in modern jets. You can feel which knob your hand touches without even looking. It's easy to pick a favorite here. So I would strike Dynon from my list which leaves Garmin and the Aztec 3100. They're quite similar in capabilities and each of them can meet my stated requirements. I got some input from both companies about these products. Hello, my name's Barry LeBlanc. I'm from Genesis Aerosystem. The 3100 is our digital-based autopilot. It's our latest feature in lineups for autopilots. We have a straight and level in case you get caught in the clouds get upside down, you can bring your aircraft back straight and level. We also have attitude and altitude um, envelope protection, and we drive the servos very differently than an analog autopilot would. Coupled with an Aspen, we'll be able to do annunciation on the aircraft, on the Aspen. Flight director on is enunciated, and it's also bi-directional, so you can set the information on the Aspen to the 3100. The 3100 is 
is certified in over 200 airframes right now. And the starting price off for upgrades from 55X to 3100 is approximately $9,995. Well, uh, I'm Joe Stewart from, with uh, Garmin, and uh, we're going to talk about using the GFC 600 autopilot in a uh, in a Bonanza. Uh, GFC 600 is is our uh, top of the line retrofit autopilot. It's used in uh, in select single engine, mostly twin engine aircraft, but is available for the A36 Bonanza. Um, it uses uh, uh, a geared but um, a brushless. DC motor that is uh, low maintenance. It has nice features like um, speed scheduled electric pitch trim so that it trims fast when you're flying slow, trims slow when you're flying fast as you would want it to. So if you're using it coupled, the autopilot coupled with our new GTN XI series with Smart Glide, you can have coupled Smart Glide. What that means is in the, in the unlikely event, but uh, the event of an engine failure, you could um, uh, activate Smart Glide on your GTNs and then have the GFC 600 hold your an indicated airspeed descent to the uh, airport that you're trying to glide to. Holding that speed that's been pre-programmed into the GTN, matching your uh, Bonanza's uh, best glide speed. Some of the features of the GFC 600 in particular, we have the nice one, button, uh, a level button, so in any situation, if you want to level out, you can hit the button and it goes to level. We have a, uh, we have heading, nav, approach, uh, vertical nav, so going into the more complicated, we're not too far from Orlando, uh, Class B airspace, so, you know, if you're flying in your Bonanza at, uh, at, at 11,000 feet, coming into Orlando, they're never going to give you a, just one descent right down to uh, pattern altitude, so, They'll put you on some sort of arrival. The, the Garmin VNAV function has all of those step-down altitudes programmed in there automatically. So you can, you can uh, let the autopilot help reduce your workload flying an arrival. We also have the optional uh, mode enunciator. And that's, uh, now all of your autopilot mode enunciations are going to be on, it could be on the top of a GI-275 or the G500 or G600 TXI. But in some installations, they want a uh, they want an additional mode enunciation, so you have that as an option. Now, all the all the Garmin autopilots, we spend a lot of time programming those so that there's there are always a nice one G level off. Some of the previous generation autopilots would kind of give you that light negative G feeling when you get to the top in the level off. Garmin's are programmed very specifically so that they have a nice one G feeling at all times. So it's a uh, it's nice for your passengers. So from here on things get a bit more subjective. The 3100 is probably the most compatible of the three with a wide choice for other avionics devices it can work with, while the GFC 500 is the least compatible. It requires a Garmin PFD, anything from the G5 all the way up to the TXI displays. That is because with the GFC 500, the autopilot computer is actually part of a Garmin display. The GFC 600 is somewhere in the middle in terms of compatibility does not depend on the Garmin flight display, but it does seem happier when connected to a Garmin GPS than to other GPS brands. The GFC 500 and 600 work with a new servo design using brushless motors, and that's an advantage for long-term reliability. Garmin did have some quality issues with their servos early on, but the problem was recognized, corrected, and all applicable servos in the field were recalled and replaced. That is no longer a concern. The Aztec was designed to be compatible with Aztec's old servos from their other autopilots, which makes the upgrade cheaper and much easier if you just want to upgrade an older Aztec system to the 3100. But it also means I have to use the older servo technology for a new from scratch installation. Another data point, I've seen way too many reports from aircraft owners who installed a new 3100 and found that their brand new autopilot had pitch oscillations or some other issues. In general, an autopilot installation is far from trivial, but the 3100, relatively speaking, seems to be even harder to install than most other autopilots. I'm sure there are some in the field that work great, but many people have ended up with a somewhat flawed installation. 
I actually flew in one a couple of months ago, also an A36 Bonanza, just like mine. And I hate to say it, but it was pretty bad. And that was a brand new installation, just signed off by the shop who installed it. And honestly, I was not impressed. Here's another difference that is important to me, and it may or may not be important to you, depending on what kind of flying you do. The Garmin Autopilots can fly a coupled go-around, whereas the s 3100 turns off the servos when you press the TOGA button. Maybe you're a VFR-only pilot, and then this is completely irrelevant for you. But if you do fly IFR, you know how difficult the transition to the missed approach segment can be. I'm at the end of a coupled approach, I know I'm very close to the ground, yet I can't see anything outside, and at that moment, when I have to add full power and go around, the autopilot hands me the plane back and says, good luck to you. That's basically what the Aztec does. While both the Garmin GFC 500 and the GFC 600 can fly a coupled missed approach. The Aztec does provide flight director guidance, but that's not the same as flying it coupled. And finally, the pre-flight checks required before each flight with the Aztec are quite elaborate. I counted 26 steps per the A36 Bonanza AFM supplement before each flight, plus another five for the electric trim. You know what? I don't think so. This would add a few minutes to each flight, and I think it's unreasonable to expect that pilots will perform so many steps for a check all the time. And the competition shows that this can be done much better. The GFC 600 tests its computer and all its servos automatically at power up without any pilot action required other than the normal flight controls check which we all do before each flight anyway, right? So, in summary, while the Garmin GFC 600 and the Genesis Aerosystems s 3100 are very similar on paper, after taking a closer look, I very much favor the Garmin unit. But which one? The GFC 500 or the more expensive GFC 600? They're pretty close in functionality, but there are two differences I found during my research. The first one is subtle. The VNAV guidance, that's what's used for automated en route descents, ends before reaching the final approach fix on the GFC 500, but it goes all the way to the FAV on the 600. The second one could make a difference should GPS ever go out or be jammed for military exercise. The GFC 500 will revert to roll mode, that means wings level, if GPS is lost while tracking a VOR or while tracking the localizer on an ILS approach. Will that happen often? No, but I would argue that if it ever does, that is a situation with increased workload where I really want the autopilot to be available. And the GFC 600 can play through this loss of GPS and track whatever navigation sensor is still working. And with that, we have a winner. My Bonanza will get the Garmin GFC 600 autopilot. So at this point, you may think the hard work is done, right? Well, far from it. A lot of questions are still open. Do I keep my mechanical six pack or do I install a modern EFIS along with the autopilot? And which one should that be? Do I keep the Avidyne IFDs or should I get a Garmin GTN instead? Which shop can do the installation? Should I get the optional yaw damper for the autopilot, or would that be overkill? Do I try to squeeze the GFC 600 somewhere into my existing instrument panel, or should I have the shop make a new panel from scratch? There are a ton of questions still to be answered, and we'll cover much of it and, you guessed it, another video in the near future. Until then, fly safe, and see you soon on YouTube or in Oshkosh for AirVenture 2022. And if all goes to plan, you can even see my Bonanza with the new Garmin Autopilot there too. Bye-bye.